Thank you for joining us on Paranormal XL. I am Gigi, and with me for, like, always is Mama Mary. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hard to believe summer's about over. I know, it's really, it is super sad. It to is. To be honest. You know, it's, yeah. it's my daughter's last summer, like, at home type of thing, too. Like, and I'm, like, at work, I'm, like, what's the date? <gasps> July, blah, blah. I'm, like, are you, you kidding me? There's only three more weeks until school starts. I I'm know. not ready. I still have to enroll her. <laughs> I'm way behind times. <laughs> way. It's on my to-do list sometime. With that, we wanted to do some what we consider fun episodes. You know, like a, ending the summer with some fun things. Um, so, this week is Big Afoot or a Sassy Squatch, a Yeti. Um, I have a whole list of names that All they've the called them. The a holy yeah. cow. Yeah. But I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. Are you? Yes. yes. We've been talking about actually the Bigfoot <laughs> episode for a long time just because, well, my little brother. Was it both of them? No, more Andrew, I think. Okay. Because uh, watch, what was that show? Um, Fighting Bigfoot? Yeah. 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 <gasps> Sissy, we need to go squatching. You know, he's like five and he's like, <laughs> we need to go squatching. <laughs> okay. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> so sometime we got to take him out and go squatching. Mm-hmm. It'd be a good time. That'd be Sitting fun. Sitting in the woods, messing with him. Well, he wants to go on the investigations with us. He keeps on asking. I know. See, I always forget to tell you these things, these ideas that I have. <laughs> I'm just full of them. <laughs> Not always good ideas. Full of something. Starting a junior crew. Oh, yeah. Where I know we got a crap ton on our plate, let alone just because of the podcast and uh, mm-hmm. everything else we got going on, but... Doing like a junior crew and setting up safe hunting. Yeah. I want to say hunting because I would not take them on an investigation with us, but hunting, yeah. like, like hunting grounds, quote unquote, where, you know, they're safe, but we teach them how to use the equipment that we do have and, you know. Something and, that would just be so fun. They feel, yeah. And they're, yeah, they'll be part of something. I think mm-hmm. that's really awesome. And the boys, that that one friend that knows everything about everything about he's witches still, and he's still everything fascinated. else. He knew the whole history of Salem. It cracked me up. I'm like, what? You should have brought him. <laughs> I should have. I don't, I don't even remember what the hell his name was, but he was funny. <laughs> I love that kid. I don't even know him. I don't even remember what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I can't wait to meet him. Make sure he comes to my wedding. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'll tell you, Andrew. Like, sit. <laughs> We're gonna be sitting there. Have this whole setup interviewing people at my wedding. <laughs> Getting in the Maybe. gypsy wagon. Oh, yeah. Invite Sasquatch. Yep. Just saying. Maybe his wife will come. Yeah. Mrs. Sa- <laughs> Mrs. Squatch. A baby Squatch. <laughs> Trying to think of other names for him. How fun. So, what are your thoughts on... Oh, um, well, I... See Bigfoot. I definitely believe in Bigfoot. I, I don't believe, him, believe in him in a sense where... He's out, you know, hiding in the woods and, you know, that's where he lives. Of course, you know, very often that's where you find him. But I feel more like um, he's interdimensional, like a lot of things are, where um, all of a sudden a portal will open and they come through. Now, and do you realize you... that you sound crazy when you say that? Of course I sound crazy. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> I mean you know, that with all the love in the world. That's you know, all right. That, you know, it, that. it does sound batshit crazy, especially when, um, you know, but I guarantee in the back of your mind, you're thinking that, well, you know, it could be possible. But, well, you know, we've, possible. we've all been raised to, that. that's a fourth dimensional thinking. It's fifth dimensional thinking. And we've all been raised by third dimensional thinking. So to a lot of people whose vibration isn't open to that yet. It does sound crazy. Well, yeah, we discussed but, that in our portals. Yeah, and I, episode, but I definitely and... think um, it's a complete possibility. I think that's why you know there's the rumors of the Loch Ness monster, you know, monster and things like that, is because they come through the portals, and that's why you don't see them all the time, and that's why you're trying to hunt them. I think um, if you found a place that had a higher vibration you would probably, you know, experience more of that. Right. 
I'm like, right. When we get into this, because I got a state by state thing of um, how many sightings are, have mm-hmm. been reported. Now, imagine the ones that aren't reported or they yeah. just disregard or whatever. But we'll have to look further into that and see. Because like, I know some some areas are more in touch with um, spir- spirituality, uh, yeah. geographically speaking. Because mm-hmm. even like the UK, you know, and, and places like they that, are, they are way more open. They are far advanced than we are, and they always have been. Um, they've always kind of been the revolutionaries, I have felt, when it comes to um, spiritual work in general. But I think that's because it's an older country, and that's where it all started, if you think about it. We're all from there in some shape or form. Right. So I'm just just going through Facebook. That's all right. No, I was looking for the um, the Facebook question of the week, which was, what are your thoughts on the Bigfoot? Mm-hmm. I don't know why I feel the need to say it like that. What? All right, really? We post some pretty funny stuff. I don't know. Would you, um, like, what would you, what would you think of Bigfoot? Do you think a Bigfoot as, like, a, like a monster? Or would you think more like, a big um... A gentle giant. Yeah. That's what I want to, <laughs> I well, don't know. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of experiences come from like, um, you know, while they're, it's spooky to experience it, you, you get a lot of tree knocking and, you know, weird screams or like weird sounds. But for me, I would see it more as like a, a playful thing. Mm-hmm. Because if something wants to scare you That's or something's you. out to get you, it's not going to let you know that it's there. Right. It's going to be quiet. Mm-hmm. So the simple fact that you're hearing it, sort of like it wants to interact in some shape or form. Well, yeah, it's probably like a spider. They're you know they're more afraid of us than they than yeah. we are of them because mm-hmm. he doesn't know. A question that I wrote jotted down because that's I think weird questions all day long <laughs> is some people be like or they refer to him as like there's just one. Clearly, if he's all over the place, there's more than just one. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> Mrs. Sasquatch. You know, yeah. it's not necessarily always a him. Because I read some stories with the research that, you know, well, I seen him. Well, no, you seen one. You seen a Sasquatch or Bigfoot, whatever. I don't know. That was just a thought that I had randomly at work. No, it does make sense. I mean, because really, you can't have one with the other, without the other, in a sense. Well, yeah. It's sort of like the chicken and the egg. What came first? I don't know. I don't know. I hate that question. I know. It's confusing. <laughs> Ooh, we could sit here all day on that. Oh, God. Oh, oh, our whole the whole rest of our lifetime on this plane, we could say. <laughs> what do you think about so. the idea that, um, like Bigfoot and you know aliens and UFOs are connected? That would be one big UFO because I'm picturing well, Bigfoot as like this big. Did you, did you ever watch Harry and the Hendersons? Yes. Oh yeah. my god, I was thinking about that the other day at work. I was like, mm-hmm. oh man, I used to love that show. You know, because there was a movie in the show. Yeah. Um, we used to watch that, and I I don't know just because I was young. And, you know, we're all... an impression. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just automatically where our mind goes. Mm-hmm. Is, okay, this is what he looks like. A slimmer, taller gorilla, essentially, is Kinda, what... Kind of, yeah. Well, you know, like, my theory is, uh, you know, maybe aliens in some shape or form shift through portals just like a Bigfoot does. So wouldn't it be realistic to think that... Oh, none of this is realistic. <laughs> well, of course, but that's why it's paranormal and fun. It wouldn't be, you know, I'm sorry, but it wouldn't be interesting if it was realistic. That, that's I'm just true. saying. Because with paranormal, you're thinking outside of the box, out of our normal that we've been raised with or formed, sculpted. Well, se. there's a lot of known cases um, where they've taken facts down where they've seen, you know, flying UFOs and Big- Bigfoots um, together, especially... Um, there's one story in Cincinnati, Ohio, 1973, a woman named Rafa Heightfield and her daughter were awakened in the middle of the night to a beam of light extending down from a bubbleless umbrella shape in the sky and tracking the light to where it landed nearby in the woods and noticed a grayish simian creature wandering toward the beam. Before they knew it, the beam had been and the craft had disappeared. So there's lots of little accounts like that that I never even connected this until I started researching. There's a lot of you know, you know, accounts where people have stated that they've seen those together, like... Well, essentially, I mean, there's the believers that, that we're aliens. Yeah, we're all we're all interdimensional beings. We really, really are. We all have that ability well, so to shapeshift into a different, different vibration. I hate that I think outside the box so much, because I... 
I wish I could record my thoughts uh-huh. because it's hard to spit them out in words, and we all know how I work with words. Not well. <laughs> um, yeah. Say he's an alien. We're an alien. We're just all aliens. That's all I got. I can't combine them. Yeah, I know what I what I'm thinking, but I can't. Well, at least um, <laughs> at least twenty percent of um, Bigfoots reported have been connected with UFOs. All sightings at the same time. So it's not a large number, but there is a possibility. But like uh, Jack Carey, he's um he's been studying Bigfoot, you know, for decades, and so he believes he also believes in aliens. So it, his take on it is it's very possible that if aliens come here and sometimes abduct people, why wouldn't they abduct creatures or you know Bigfoot or something like that? Well, that's true. So that's another possibility. Like- but if we're all aliens anyway, like, why why would they want to come and adopt us? Well, see, my thing is, I think... um, We're a different species we're, of aliens. Yeah, we're, well, clearly we're, we're aliens, because if there's other life out there, that's what alien is. We're, it, it, it's, yeah. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. And sometimes it's like, um, for me, like a big science experiment. I think sometimes that's why, you know, things happen where the dinosaurs ended, because they were placed there for an experiment that didn't work out. Clearly. And so, what do you do when you have an experiment? You you pull out specimens and you research them. You see what I'm saying? Uh huh. I um I do believe that there's a god. I believe um but I believe there's much more to it than just just that. I, I think it doesn't that's, stop there. I think there's a reason why there's science too. Oh, science! You know, I it's it's all placed there because mm-hmm. it's you need all of it to find to find the right answer. Right. But essentially, there is no final answer to me. That's how I think about it. Because I was, you know, again, thinking. But this time I was driving. <laughs> again, not a good combination. Because well, I get so off my thought. Better than drinking and driving. Uh, you know, taking in the aspect of aliens in general. And, you know, it all being one big picture. It is one big picture. And I took myself out of that big picture and set myself outside of that picture. And I, it was so good. I knew it was good. It'll come, it'll come to you. You were riding in your car and you were thinking. It was, and that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I wanted to hit before we got, well, we just kind of jumped in. Well, it's an exciting uh, topic that oh, we're yeah. talking about. The definition of Bigfoot, the, or the best definition that, because there are people everywhere that, I don't know, maybe that's not what I want to say. Some people may not know what a Bigfoot is. Oh, that's a, that is a possibility. So, in North American folklore, at least in North America, um, Bigfoot or Sasquatch are said to be hairy, upright, walking, ape-like creatures that dwell in the wilderness and leave footprints. <laughs> what? No way! <laughs> what? Everything leaves footprints unless you're hovering. Holy shit. Wow! Um, depictions often portray them as a missing link between humans and human ancestors or their great apes. So, so I don't, the belief of, um, oh my God, that's what I'm looking for. Where, a, where, where, where we come from apes. Oh, the evolution. Evolution. Oh, they're, they're, yeah. they're, 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 what is wrong with me today? Evolution. Now, what happened there? Like, if that's a missing link, I'd, I, I don't think that's our missing link. No, me personally. Well, it very well could For be, me, but... the idea that goes back to, you know, being placed here as an experiment. So they're, you're created to start there to see what, how it evolves after okay. that. Oh, yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why so maybe I feel like it all has is really truth a to thing. it. Yeah. We're just a big, Earth is just a big experiment. I feel... I feel like it's all connected. You know, I think that's why, you know, getting into that religion, it cuts you off of everything. I think it's all true. I think there there is a higher source. There is a God. But there is also that evolution and that science. Animals do it all the time, if you think about it. Yeah. They're always evolving to mm-hmm. adapt to their environment. Right. Why wouldn't humans? Well, yeah. In some shape or form. <clears throat> I, I truly believe that that, so that is a possibility. So we're putting People are so close-minded, though, because the science does fall into this paranormal stuff in, in, in the spirituality I mean, the people that believe in just the universe and that's what's causing things to happen and whatnot. But there's also questions beyond science. See, I can't get my brain to ever stop. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, science says it's this. I understand that, but why? Yeah, and, and that, that, that is where, um, you know, 
for me, that's where the science will block you, but that's where where your religious and your spiritual faith comes in, is having faith that just because you can't prove something doesn't mean it's not there. Right, because you could ask why, well, to any question, but eventually you're going to get stumped. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's like with... um, when we talked, like, children and paranormal and the out-of-body experience, science says this. Okay, you you told me this happens, but why does that happen? Mm-hmm. Why are why are our chemicals imbalanced? Okay, they may have a reason for that. Okay, but what made them that way? Why are that? that exactly. That way? Where did those chemicals come from? Who put those chemicals in us to make us be Where that way? Where did the way? alphabet come from? Who said that that was a letter A? Why is it in something else? Me. Who made the number one? Me. Because I am number one. Woo-hoo. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I am so. I am a humble person. I don't mean that. <laughs> I always wondered that too. When you think of a word, yeah, and you say a word over from? and over, and you're like, why would somebody just look at that cup? And they're like, that's a cup. We're gonna call that a cup. But why? Why yeah. is it, why is it an it? Yeah, I know. Why is yeah yeah? Why is a big foot a big foot? Mm. Does he have big feet? He does. Here's one for you. Okay. Why did the big foot cross the road? Why? Well, did you tell her sign? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no way. Holy. I didn't see that joke coming at all. Fascinating. You, so learn, you learn something new every day. That's right. For show. <laughs> for show. So I have a little bit of history. Yeah. Go for well, it. We'll see. We'll see if we like this history. <laughs> so the thing with the history of Bigfoot, though, it's so hard to, because again, they, they say they can't prove that he exists, but they also can't disapprove. And then it's back to spirits or anything paranormal, I guess. Mm -hmm. So the history is clearly going to be choppy or we're clearly going to have not agreement Mm -hmm. throughout it. Oh, yeah. Because the history of it's all hearsay. That's true. So according to David Dillaging, the legends predate the name Bigfoot. They differ in their details, both regionally and between families in the same community. (laughs) Ecologist Robert... (laughs) Ecologist Robert Pyle says the most cultures have accounts of human-like giants in their folk history expressing a need for some larger-than-life creature. Each language had its own name for the creatures featured in a local version of such legends. Many names meant something along the lines of a wild man or hairy man, although other names described common actions that it was said to perform such as eating clams or shaking trees. Chief Michelle of the Nikes Comics at Leighton, Britain, Columbia. <laughs> British Columbia. Did you, I just tried to, like, roll an M. That was weird. <laughs> British Columbia told such a story to Charles Hilltow in 1898. He named the creature by a something variant, meaning the <laughs> benign-faced one. See, that this is one... That I actually heard about and took notes. I actually mm-hmm. heard on another podcast. Um, I didn't realize it was in this literature that I have as well. Because they he became big in like the 1950s. Or that's when the sightings started. started and people were like, oh my god. You know, the Bigfoot craze. Same with like the UFO craze. It all, like mm-hmm. they've probably been around forever. But the big craze came in, yeah. you know. Yep. Um, so that was the 1950s, but it was 1840 there was documentation. 1840. That's yeah. 110 years earlier. Am I right? I'm, I suck at math. <laughs> We're trying to add on our fingers, looking up, at, looking up at the ceiling, trying to, like, yeah. it's going to give us the answers. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So less menacing versions have also been recorded, such as the one in 1840 by Alcana Walker, a Protestant missionary who recorded stories of giants among the Indians living Spokane, Washington. The Indians said that these giants lived on and around peaks of nearby mountains and stole salmon salmon (laughs) from the fishermen's nets. Now there's a, a, I I don't want to steal the information, but that's exactly what I'm about to do. Um, Because he researched that part more than I did from that Mm -hmm. other paranormal podcast. Um. That it came from a diary. Oh, that I'll would make sense. That first oh, yeah. documentation. Yeah, because 1840, it wasn't like they were putting it on Facebook or anything. If you are interested in learning more stuff, different stuff uh, about Bigfoot, 222 Paranormal Podcast. They are great podcasters. It's brother and sister. You probably already know them. They've been around for a while, a lot longer than us, but they are great. And we also have something else to say about that podcast later. So anyway, let's bring it back in. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in the 1920s, Indian agent 
J.W. Burns compiled local stories and published them in a series of Canadian newspaper articles. They were accounts told to him by the St. Alice people of Chelehus and others. The St. Alice and other regional tribes maintained that the Sasquatch were real. They were offended by people telling them that the figures were legendary. According to St. Alice accounts, the Sasquatch preferred to avoid white men and spoke the Liliot language of the people at Port Douglas, British Columbia, at the head of Harrison Lake. These accounts were published again in 1940. Burns borrowed the term Sasquatch from the Halcom Mellum and used it in his articles to describe a hypothetical single type of creature portrayed in the local stories. So, there was more I wanted to put in that. <laughs> um, yeah, so the stories have been around forever. What made it so common in 1950 and people have hung on to it since then, I have no idea. Maybe It'd be more sightings to, um, or research, I guess. But yeah. I do believe it. Uh, it came from um, the tribes. The, oh yeah, the original stories and whatnot. So maybe he is afraid of the white man, like without the tribal thing, because you get tribal land and stuff, and they say you know the skinwalkers, they can't leave tribal land. Yeah, yeah. So maybe it's one of those things, Something like that. So like, really, essentially. What you need to do if you want to research it more is find out where these sightings have been. See how many are actually on tribal lands or old tribal lands that maybe aren't considered tribal lands anymore. But, you know, at one point they all were. But Oh, yeah. Maybe it was just goes. because um, they knew the Native Americans would understand them. Mm-hmm. Accepted them because they believe in the spiritual realm and world mm-hmm. and all that. Yeah. Hmm. It, quite interesting. Especially the account of the 1840. It was, um, you know, he threw rocks. Some of the stories were very, um, I don't want to say gruesome, but kind of like he was mean. But I think, you know, if he is real, he wasn't really mean. He was just trying to communicate in a way because he clearly can't talk. But mm-hmm. I, maybe he's just another animal on the earth. Like, well, there's so many. Imagine, like, all the animals that we haven't found in, like, deep in the jungle and way deep in the ocean. Like, oh, my God, there's a whole other world down there that we will, in our lifetime, never see. Exactly, Because yeah. we don't have the technology to get us down there. Like, oh, man. The deeper you get in the ocean, the uglier the fish are, though. You seen the pictures? Ooh. Oh, I know. Oh, it creeps me out. But it's so, and they get larger, and they're huge. Like, the big octopuses and oh. these big, scary fish with these big, scary teeth and... But it's so cool to think about what is, there's a whole, well, scary, yeah. cool, scary, what's underneath there? Like, I know. And what's just living? It's just living down there, hanging out, living on Earth with us. We don't know. It is kind of creepy. Big fish scary. I, I'm fine with just seeing the pictures myself, but I, d- I think it's a really cool, cool thought. I, I remember like, when no. I was a little girl. <laughs> And I watched like a you know, like nine one one show, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. and in the show Best they were they were fishing for barracudas, and they caught one, and the barracuda jumped off the line and started eating the lady's <laughs> leg. Gross! I have nightmares about catching a fish and it starts to eat me. That's gross. It is gross. Why would you say that story? Because it creeps me out. Mm. Mm. There was one. You see, it was barracuda. It was a piranhas in one of the Ugh. lakes we used to go to as a kid, and it ate some a woman's toe off. Ugh. And so I refused to Ugh. go in lakes for a long time when I was little because it always scared me. Heck yeah. Maybe that's where my fear of sharks came from. And I was like, why would you be afraid of sharks? You live in Michigan like there's no sharks around. But I think it it's sharks, but big things underwater that you can't see. Uh, yeah. And big bodies of water it's scare the creepy. shit out of me. Yeah. It's, it's but I love creepy. the water at the same time. It scares me. I'm fine if I'm sitting next to it and I can hear it, but to go in, mm, 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 mm. count me out. Yeah. Flying over it, count me out. Ugh. Getting in a ship, count me out. And there I was going to join the Navy. <laughs> 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 I would have got over that fear really, really fast, but yeah. uh, here we are today and I still have that fear and that's okay. It is what it is. <laughs> so that was kind of a fun history lesson, if you understood any of it. <laughs> me and my words we don't mesh well what you got next well here i have um he carries you know. a shopping bag oh <laughs> he probably wears he's probably stuck in the 80s okay picture picture this sicily 1930 i'm kidding you know that's from <laughs> golden girls <laughs> picture this okay we got sasquatch okay 
between what eight and twelve feet tall, big hairy. He's got a nice gold fanny pack on. Okay. Yeah, some bling. Yes. Mm-hmm. Some like a fishnet shirt, kind of, you know, with the open. Yeah, some yeah. sunglasses. Uh, some leg warmers, even though he clearly doesn't yes. need those. But, oh, uh-huh. yeah, I'm picturing him dressed in, like, yeah. 80s clothes and, like, yep. see, like, if you have not seen Harry and the Hendersons, the movie or the TV show, look it up. <laughs> like a sweatband going around the forehead. Yes, yes. I don't know. I just picture that you need to see that. But, yeah. Anyway, sorry. I love the 80s. Oh, there's, well, there's lots of different accounts, but this one, um, this one was in New York. And on June 22nd, 2009, I think it was a 19-year-old college student. He was driving probably, I think it was around 6.30 p.m. And it doesn't really matter, but he was on his way to a rehearsal at a performance arts center. Hmm. And he swerved to miss an object in the road. And it was like a, a shopping bag that had like cereal in it, you know, a small log, just weird things. Cereal. And so he glanced at his rear view mirror and he saw someone or something dart behind his car. He was, you know, thinking apparently to retrieve the bag. So a moment later, he stopped and he turned around to, and then um, got a good look at something walking on two feet, about fifty feet away. That was extremely tall, like you know, like seven and a half feet, and it had black hair, broad, muscular shoulders, with arm that swung in exaggerated fashion, with palms that faced upwards. And he remembered feeling, you know, nervous and confused. But this being stopped and picked up that bag. So what if he's just a shoplifter? Like, um, <laughs> what if what if he just he just wanted he, his damn cereal? He, he goes into campsites and steals exactly. people's food, like he's Yogi the Bear. Yeah. Hey man, he's got to eat two Bigfoots. Got to eat two. Man, you think Maybe. it was like Lucky Charms? Probably. You know. I like cinnamon you know, toast crunch. What if he's got a baby scratch and he's got to feed the baby scratch? Baby scratch need cereal? Who doesn't yeah. need cereal? I feed my plants cereal. He's got to feed his Just BS. Kidding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. His BS. <laughs> baby squash. That's funny. <laughs> Who that be? Look at that little BS. <laughs> you little BS. Now, here's a question. Mm-hmm. All the accounts on this folklore stuff. Okay, so we got Bigfoot. Yeah. We got Goatman. We got Dogman. We got Mothman. There's... Blah, 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 man, blah, blah, a crap load of them. What if they're all the same thing? Because essentially people see them out of the corner of their eye or they don't, you know, they're not sitting like me and you close. Well, a lot of times people you know, perceive it the way they want to perceive it. Right. Perceive it, yeah. So uh, what if we're just looking at a bunch of Sasquatches? Or what if it's just a big bunch of Mothmans or Goatmans mm-hmm. or Dogmans? Like, Anything's I, possible, I've yeah. i looked into lightly on a lot of these legends just because I, I do like hearing the stories. But essentially... I'm like, okay, it's this thing, and it's on two legs, and okay. I To me, it could be all the same thing. It I don't want to, and I could be wrong, there could be a, there's a lot of, I, I don't want to, experts, experts on, like, the Mothman, the Dogman, where people have just went and dug into these accounts of people seeing, and they've tried to look for them, and, and they have a lot of great information, but what if ultimately that, it's all the same thing that we're seeing. I'm not necessarily saying they're all a Sasquatch, but maybe they're all a dog man. Maybe they're all whatever. Yeah. I mean, anything's just... possible. Definitely. It'd be interesting. You know, if they're really dedicated, they'd be already having an interview with that Sasquatch. You know, is that our mission? Yeah. I want to know what makes them tick. I've been all about interviews lately. Oh, did you see that light bulb? I did. Okay. Your, I hair, your hair shook. <laughs> <laughs> Went up and like stood straight up. Me and my my <laughs> bun that I always wear. Oh man, the pins are clicking. It is. <laughs> well, here's another one. Um, right around one thirty in the morning on it was January eighth, two thousand eight. There was a big red driver, and he was hauling a load of Idaho potatoes on US one fifteen. <sighs> potatoes. And I think this was <laughs> in Utah. He downshifted and he headed down an incline and the fog grew extremely heavy. He noticed something by the side of the road with glowing eyes and thought it might be a deer. So when he switched on his high beams, he was startled to see a gigantic creature running across the road from left to right, trying to get to the other side, just (laughs) 20 feet or so away, (laughs) according to, um, this was according to the interview with a BFRO investigator. So I'm not sure. That must be just a, you know. The initials or whatever 
for an investigative team. Um, he described the, the creature as being eight to 10 feet tall, between 600 and 800 pounds. And it had black hair and big eyebrows and long, lanky arms that were much longer than a human's. So, you know, there's another account, which is kind of similar to the other one. But don't you think, like, they would, like, you know, accents change from different state to state. Don't you think, do you think it's possible, like, that the appearances change? Right. Yeah. Do you think there's an albino Sasquatch? I do. And I think that is, I said a Yeti. It's a bomber of a snowman. Yeah. Okay. And that's what I picture. Yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. The the, the white squatches that are, um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Man, there's so much. Really, I'd love to interview everybody that had an account with them. Now, with the pictures that they have, that they say they have debunked, you know, there's somewhere they say where, where it's a bear with mange mm-hmm. or what have you. See, the problem is nowadays, well, people are gullible. Yeah, that's true. And we have so much technology now that you can change anything into something else with a click of a button. You know, where before it was, you know, you had to take your film in, mm-hmm. you know, you and have it developed. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all that, like it was a huge process. Now you just click. On your phone, you can edit anything. You know, put it on your computer, you could. well, holy crap. Yeah. You could just be sitting in your living room and say, yup, I'm at the beach. And then you got, you know, you could put yourself at the beach. Like, you can do so many things. So it's so hard to trust anything and take anything being authentic nowadays yep. until you have seen it with your own eyes. Now, I think everybody should be a skeptic believer on anything because of that. That is true. Yeah. You I know, agree. Don't say it's not real just because you haven't seen it. Um, don't just necessarily believe it right away either. Exactly. Like, yeah, but yeah you don't want to discredit somebody either. I mean, there's a nice way to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, like, man, that's that's a cool story, bro. You know, let's go squatching sometime, see if I can <laughs> see the same thing. You know, don't, like I said, unless they can drag a Bigfoot in by its big doll and say, hey, look at what I caught. Can I keep it? It followed me home. <laughs> you know, it, it is hard to believe, mm-hmm. but there are believers out there, and that's great. That's what's keeping keeping it going. Yeah, there's which a reason. Is also awesome. There's a reason why there's stories about it. Mm-hmm. Well, Not it originated somewhere. There's yeah. some truth to every legend, but where it started from. Uh, looking at the history of where exactly, like, okay, Didn't start r- right. This old man was telling his kids, a, you know, his grandkids a story. Because he saw this, and then over hundreds of years, you know, it clearly, it's like playing telephone, like at school, how it changes from point A to point Z when it gets through all the people. You know, what's, find the original story that, Mm -hmm. you know, that's where I think the coolness comes in is to find out. And it may be something just totally silly. Yeah. Like, it it was actually a goldfish. (laughs) It wasn't Bigfoot at all. It was it was a goldfish, and this guy just needed to entertain his kids to put him to sleep, you know, telling them a bedtime story. Made it up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <sighs> well, stories are made up, but they come from some yeah. where. The, even if it's just a little piece of that made-up story came from somewhere, I think. I don't know. Or you put yourself you made up stories, you know, for us. I think for us to even our imagination, what what will trigger that? Something small like us having dinner. Mm-hmm. Okay, but okay, so we're having dinner, but we are. Let's change that up a little bit, and we are aliens having dinner, and we're eating monkey brains, and you know. <laughs> but it essentially started from us. Does that make any sense to me? Uh, it makes sense. Kind of. So out of that means no. You said kind of. <laughs> But you're taking an original story. Okay, this is where it came from. But then you're changing the little details yeah. of it. And mm-hmm. then as time goes on, it gets changed. But it's it eventually started from me, you, and the kids, and Sean, and Dad having dinner at the table. Like a snowball effect. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I just took the long route. <laughs> <laughs> the fun route, I like to call it. Um. Yeah, good times. So you had, you were talking about sighting. Can we take a little break? Mm-hmm. You good with that? Yep. And we're taking a break. Off northern Vancouver Island is at the center of an eerie mystery. People in Alert Bay say they've been hearing strange screams and howls from the forest at night. And the legend of the Sasquatch runs deep in their First Nations culture. As CTV's Gord Kerbis reports, some are now wondering if those legends are real. 
It's an eerie recording captured on a cell phone of something that's making strange howling noises heard throughout Alert Bay. We heard it once and I didn't get the recording and then second time I got the recording and that's what was on the back porch. Very eerie. The audio was recorded just recently on the backside of Cormorant Island. It's been heard by many all over the island. This summer I've heard it three times. I've heard it scream three times. But uh, it's been coming here for years. Whatever's been making the noise is heard primarily at night. Some say it's a dog, but others say that's impossible. With that volume, absolutely nothing. No dog can make that kind of a noise yeah. with, that, with that volume. Art Dick hears the vocalizations just outside of his home. He's convinced the calls are from a Sasquatch. He believes the creature is real because of several previous encounters, like several years ago on a remote island further south when a tree was thrown at himself and fellow clam diggers. Pulled the tree right out of the ground. The branches were still on it. I don't know anything that can just literally pull a tree with roots and all. I mean, you know, you see that little alder growing out there. You try to go and pull it out, you're not going to be able to do it. While well, the howls and screams that have been heard throughout Alert Bay can be dismissed as simply animal noises, you have to keep in mind that Cormorant Island is a location where there is no wildlife. There's no bears, no cougars, not even any deer. And while you could dismiss the noises, there have been plenty of sightings. One person that's seen it. Her father lives in Alert Bay, and she came up to visit her father. So she went up to the graveyard to um, pay respects to one of her family. And when she went up to the graveyard, she seen it standing there. She turned around and she got out of there right away. She didn't even go to the graveyard. And a more recent sighting when a group of teens were playing soccer near the band's big house. A large upright creature moved quickly alongside the building in just a few strides. Yeah, they took off right away. They don't even stay there anymore after the dark. Tomorrow on CTV News, a visit to the island by renowned Sasquatch investigator John Bindernago, talking with witnesses and looking for clues, and we'll travel along. Gord Kervis, CTV News, Alert Bay. And we are back from our little mini break. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, we went out, the little squatching. It was, <laughs> it was, it was squatching, all right. <laughs> yeah, we were. Yeah, we was. Um, what so do you we, got were, we were talking about, um, you know, the different sightings, and you were going to tell us about the, the the number of sightings in each state. state. Yes. Um, I'm not going to say them all because we'd be here all day. Um, so we'll go through it. The largest one, or the one with the most documented sightings, is Washington. The, just the state of Washington. Really? Guess how many? Million. <laughs> no. I was way going, off, way I was off. going big, going home. 666. Oh, that's kind of creepy. Yes, yes it was. Um, the last one was reported in, uh, December 20th of 2018. Oh. Yeah. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a lie. Uh, it, it was actually, um, hold on, January, February, March, April, <laughs> June. June. June of 2019. <laughs> I'm a liar. So, yeah, Washington State at 666. Wow. Boom. Yes, I thought that was kind of crazy. Um, And then coming in at a second is California. Really? Yes. Which, when I think about it, I'm like, duh. Because, the, you know, Washington, you would think it's going to be Northern California because of all the trees, yeah. the redwood trees, mm -hmm. the, the forests that are up there, the, those yeah, it's a big place to very hide. Close. Yeah, it's at 441. The last one was um, April of 2019. Oh. Yeah. Pretty weird. Um, then Those are both, like, fairly recent. Yes. Yeah. Uh, some of these are. Uh, Florida at 325, April of 2019, the last reporting. Oregon, 250. Uh, it's like two, uh, bleh, December of 2018. We got Texas, which is weird. That's, like, a way far off. But Texas at 238. Of May of 2019, we got Michigan, Ooh. of course. We get, yeah, I figured Michigan, that was my first place, obviously, to go. To look, yeah. Yeah, because Michigan is big, and we do have a lot of forest areas. Oh, yeah, where, we do. You know, whatever, mm -hmm. considering that's where they say that he is, or she, or Baby Squatch. Uh, well, we only come in at a 2000, or really? 219. Really? 
But that's only documented cases where people have, yeah. you know, because I'm sure there's lots of campers out there, people going up north just for, you know, at their cabins or just visiting mm-hmm. that, you know, claim they've seen one but haven't ever officially reported it. And that was Michigan's last reporting was May of 2019. Um, uh, Missouri was at 149. And the last one was uh, July 2019. Oh. But yeah, I was um Vermont was only had nine. Which was, you know Well. They definitely don't like Vermont. And Wyoming had none. Wyoming was at zero the only one at zero. Interesting. Like Wisconsin, ninety nine. Which I would feel that all those northern states at the border of Canada and the U.S. and I'm sure Canada's got a lot. I only looked into the states because that's where we are. Mm-hmm. But if anybody listening in Canada, because you guys are awesome, let us know if you have any stories, too, mm-hmm. you know, of that or have um, knowledge of how many reported sightings are up there Yeah, with that. Um, or any other country, the UK, Ireland, any of them, you know, it, it would be neat to see um, that. <clears throat> like North Dakota's got six, which is surprising to me because, again, North Dakota is up on that line, but they don't have a lot of wooded areas. So maybe that's why. That would make sense. I mean, because if yeah. he does want to be hidden, he's clearly going to be in wooded areas. But I, I don't know because I don't know if he's real. Ohio has 290. Really? Yeah. Wow. Which, I don't know. I didn't picture Ohio, but they are big and, you know, squatching and whatnot. But at the same time, I don't know. Like I said, it goes back to what I just said with, with the, the forest line there. This, I, I don't know. Because I, I don't picture Ohio having a lot of wooded areas or un, unpopulated areas because that's where people see him is unpopulated areas. Unless I'm wrong. But I no. can't see him hanging out yeah. in like New York City or Chicago, you know, partying it up. You know? San Francisco. Yeah, he's like, eh, what's up, guys? Sitting you know? on the beach drinking a Mai Tai. Yeah, Alaska's got 22. See, I kind of would have figured Alaska would have had more only because they are so... um. Way out there, yeah. Almost. Not yeah, like yeah. way out there, but outdoorish. I guess is the yeah. way. But they're they're like way up there, and well, they're very disconnected from. Yeah, they're more rustic. The, the continental U.S. Yeah, because they're essentially yeah. a part of Canada. Probably, I, they're like nobody the, come after me for saying no, that. They're but like the badasses of the United States because they have to rough it all the time. Yeah, they're just hanging out up there. Like they're not connected to us. They're just like we're Alaska. They're bitches. part of, like they're part of our shit, but they don't need our shit. Yeah. Yeah. Shit, what are we still doing here? You get paid to live in Alaska. Why are we living here? I don't know. Go go up there and become like Alaskan bushwhackers. It's, it's beautiful up there. It oh is my pretty up there. God, some of the pictures that you see. But, mm-hmm. uh, I had a cousin in the military who was stationed up there. But whoa. I don't think I could, I could. I don't think I could handle the winters though. Right. Well, yeah, they get yeah. like so many Oof. months of darkness and daylight or whatever. Yeah. That would suck. But man. It's, it's be, maybe just go live up there for a year just to see what it's like, you know? I, I don't know. I, I've always been fascinated with Alaska, but I almost would have figured that number would be higher, but. You think so? Not. Nebraska's at like 15. I'm just randomly, randomly talking here, or not talking, but. <laughs> Where's the mass of two sets? It's not on my, oh, 35. Oh. Thirty-five. Maine's mm-hmm. at seventeen. Maine is another beautiful state that I really, really want to go see. Lots of history there. Mm-hmm. Probably a lot of haunted locations we could visit. Oh yeah. Did I already say Vermont? Vermont uh, was nine. E- Came in at- Rhode yeah. Island's only got five. That's wow. a tiny little state, though. They're right on the water, though, too, aren't they? They are. Oh. Oh, I gotta say that one for another episode. My question I was gonna have. Uh, Kentucky's at 113. Which was, where was Tennessee? Tennessee is at 100, it looks like. Okay. See, they have a lot of mountains through there. Mm hmm. What about Colorado? You got like the Rocky Mountains. Oh, that's true. Kaylee Reed, 124. I would have guessed that would have been more. But again, that comes down to these are just documented cases. They contacted the right people to have it documented Mm -hmm. to get these numbers type of thing. So, yeah, I was no, just it's still to, good to have the numbers. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. I, I thought it was interesting. I wanted to do a little more with this, have it <laughs> a little more organized when I was going through it. But 
as we all know, there's not enough hours in a day to do everything. Eh, it's more fun when you're do. not organized anyway. Oh my god. Yeah, until the aftermath, we gotta clean up the mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good times, good times. What you got, Mama? Well, here is another um, accounting. It happened on October 23rd in 2010. It was about 7.15 a.m. and a deer hunter had parked his vehicle on a trail and he, you know, quietly slipped into the darkness. I don't know why it says that, but it's just funny. Uh, and he quietly slips into the darkness. <laughs> he and then, and, and then. then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, lo- I love that movie. I know. And it's then. It's the dumb movies. Yes. That like. No, and then. <laughs> I, you gotta, ha- you gotta have those dumb movies. You really do because the, you, that's my escape from reality anyways, watching some dumb corny movie. But those are the ones that stick with you, and then you it say, is. and then, then you say the things from the movie, and then no one then, and then what's my tattoo say, dude? <laughs> man, man, what's mine say, dude? Dude, what's my? <laughs> anyway, sorry, go ahead with your story. <laughs> and then he hoped to um, make it to his favorite clearing without spooking the deer, and he was walking in a very large like area. It was. Uh, and he could see something really large in front of him, about 10 yards ahead of him on the trail. It didn't look like it was running. And it, he thought it, it felt like it was, um, he was taking like, like huge strides, like, like twice as big as like a person would take. That's what he thought was weird. And it wasn't, it was right in front of him. And he didn't seem to be in a hurry. So he, he clicked on his flashlight and he saw, you know, a being that was like seven to seven and a half feet. And he estimated the weight about 500 pounds. And he said that it was very muscular and covered all over with dark fur and had long arms and slightly hunched posture. And he said he's seen a few bears and he knows without a doubt that it wasn't a bear. And then after the creature saw him, it quickly moved, you know, down the hillside and then it was gone. Maybe he was just super tired. They know <laughs> you say 7.15 in the morning. That's kind of late to be out hunting. Like, not that late. That is kind of like a, a le- late start yeah, is what I was Normally you're in there I was raised way with before all that. Hunters. Yeah. That's a but, good point on that story. Um, now, bears, because that's why it was just a bear you saw. But with that being said, bears generally have short arms, short legs. They're yeah. tubby. They're not just walking around on their hind legs either. When they're walking, because when we went to Tennessee that couple times to see Mike, mm-hmm. you know, we did, we stopped. There was this trail through the Rockies that he took us, and we had to stop because there was bears. And, well, then, of course, other people had stopped, and it was a one-way road. But, you know, watching these baby bears and the mama bear and stuff like that, they're on all fours. Like, when mm-hmm. they're just hanging up. The only time that they'll really get up on the two is, you know, feeding or... or they're, they Yeah, thing. they want to fight you. Like, and that's when they look all big. Other than that, the bears, unless they yeah. don't puff their hair up, you know, if they're not feeling defensive, they're actually quite small yeah, not, to what people so picture have, big grizzly you know, ah, bears tall. are. Right. Well, what do you what do you think uh, the people in Florida call Bigfoot? Oh, hold on, I got that. <laughs> Wait, where is it? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what they <laughs> they call they call them um, a skunk ape because um, in reference to like their appalling smell because of course you know Florida's yes. swamp area and so it, it you know supposedly exudes like a. Really stinky, horrible smell. I got here. What do you call it? A skunk what? Skunk ape. Skunk ape. Yep, it's right there. <laughs> skunk ape. Skunk demon. Skunky Bill. A stinkaboo. <laughs> a stinkaboo. There's it's, another one here. Oh my god! It's In like West a, Virginia, they like, refer to it as shit man or shit. Is it like man. a a stinky boo hag? Boo hag. Oh, boo hag. No, don't ever all boo hags. We're just doing that. Stinky cause. boo hag. <laughs> boo hags. Oh, what a. That was a fun episode. <laughs> boo hag. Mm. You got. Well, this one, um, the report was that a fishing guide, he was using a pole to uh, propel a flatboat and uh, like a mangrove swamp, and he and his two clients which was like a commercial pilot and an attorney spotted something on the shore, like about a hundred feet away. At first they thought it might just be like a feral hog or maybe a bear. But as it got closer, the creature, which apparently had been rooting there through the sand and the fish, um, 
he turned and he stood up and he looked at them. And so the guide estimated that the skunk cape was as wide as it was side by side, like like a refrigerator or a freezer, and the with a muscular torso and a Z, ZZ top beard. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> and he, but he had a hairless forehead. The creature mm. is probably from the, you know, sweatband that he had been wearing. Oh, yeah. From the 80s. ZZ top. <laughs> yeah. The creature stared at I them, them for a about- concert one time. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean no, to interrupt you. I did you. too. I think a couple of times. Two, two did times. You? Maybe yeah. we were at the same concert. Mike, fi- that was my first concert that Mike took me to. It was ZZ top and Leonard Skinner. And he took me to them with, a, with his friend, uh, uh, Josh, something rather or another, and if I we were in high school still, it was it was <laughs> awesome. Anyway, sorry, no, so you're I, right. I know they're they're really small guys, so you really can't confuse ZZ Top with a Squatch because yeah. ZZ Top they're little guys. Maybe but anyway, he, maybe this Squatch was just a fan, and he liked the beer, so he turned it like that. Yeah, hell yeah. He, it says here that the creature stared at him for about fifteen seconds, and then made a kind of like guttural snort and walked away. Now, when was this? This was back in um, 2011 in May. Okay, in 2011, we did have cell phones. Why isn't anybody getting any... I don't know. Any, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just throwing that out there. You'd think so. You'd think that'd be the first thing they'd want to do is try to get a picture. I would. I, I wouldn't I'd be get moving it all slow. Because I would, and... I would screw it up. Well, first of all, I would pass out. <laughs> and then, yeah. But yeah, you, you, you would think at some point... Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot to go on that, but... <laughs> well, yeah. So what yeah. kind of other names do they have? Oh, man. These are good. Um, let me find a... <laughs> There's, like, a crap on. But you got to figure these are from different states, different countries. It's pretty awesome. Right here. For some reason, that came out twice. So we got... I mean, like, Apple Steelers. That's fun. Huh. Ape Man, of course. American Ape. But... <laughs> When you say American ape, we got Big Hairy Man, the messenger. That's from USA Hopi Tribe, actually. Big Hairy Monster, the big man. Big, big hairy figure with eyes sunk deep into the head. Like, Northwest USA. That's a really long name. It is, but that also comes from another tribe that I'm not even going to... I'm not going to try to say because of the fact that I I don't want to disrespect them and say it wrong. There's... Big ones. <laughs> Boggy Boone. Boggy Bill. That's in te- East Texas. Booger Man. Boogie Man. Boogie Monster. He likes the boogie. So we got Boisk in Southwest Canada. That comes from another tribe. Um, brother who comes back before the next very big winter. Huh. It's from South Dakota. Whoa. Chinese Wild Man. That's odd. Cato Critter, the cannibal giant. See, I don't know. That just says USA Native American. I don't know if I call him a cannibal. He's never reported. Well, yeah. People wouldn't be able to report him being a cannibal because they'd be eaten. Uh, the cannibal who eats dead people. That's from the USA. Cave monster, cave spirit, cave yeller. Chi Chi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chuchna, crying beast. We got Devil Monkey, <laughs> Destroyer Who Breaks Up Houses. That's also in USA. Another one I can't pronounce. Another one. <laughs> forest Devil, Forest Giant, Fork Monster, The Ohio Grass Man, Ching Sung Grass Man, G- Gulaga, Goo Goo, <laughs> Honey Island Swamp Monster. Harry Bill, that's from Texas. Harry Giants, Harry Ones, Harry Man, Harry Woman, or Harry People. The Harry Man who appears as the symptom. Harry Potter's not in there, is he? No. Okay. <laughs> the Harry Man who appears as a symptom of disruption. That's also in South Dakota. The Harry People from Kentucky. The Harry Stinkaboo, <laughs> Southern Ohio. The Harry Stinkaboo. Hill Monkeys. Hala Yella. What? What? West Virginia? <laughs> what? Uh, hoodoo. Hoo hoo. See, I refer to a hoo hoo as something different than a Sasquatch. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, Indian, Indian Hair Man. That's from West, West Virginia as well. Jacko from Canada. 
BC, Canada. Jimbara, that's from Australia. Jinka, the jungle man, which is India. See, he's from all over. People have seen him all yeah. over. Yep. So that's a, you know, that goes to a landline things. Did I say that? Yeah, landline. Mm-hmm. The ley lines? Ley lines. Landlines. That's a telephone. <laughs> Telephone. The ley lines. <clears throat> that's something we should research. Research mm-hmm. and then look oh, yeah. at where pe- these sightings have that's gone. That's a good idea. So they can call back. Yeah. Come back from that because if that goes back to your theory with the portals, yeah, people say portals something to do with, with with the ley lines and whatnot. See, that's another thing. Man, oh my god, we could we're just all over the place. Oh my god, I wish we could just win the lottery tonight because that's my plan, and then that's we a, could actually do this stuff twenty four seven, and we wouldn't have to go to our forty plus hour work weeks at a, our workplaces that we yeah. don't want to go anyway. <laughs> um, King Kong, huh? Cap tap. Uh, that's fun. Long-eared ape. The man beast. Man monkey. Manimal. <laughs> a manimal. That's funny. Momo. Short for Missouri monster. Mm. Boom. That's what Momo is. Not that scary YouTube video. Nook look. Some of these I, ju- I just can't pronounce. So, <laughs> Old yellow. Old hairy belt. We already had that one. Old ones who cry, old ones who run at night, old skunky Bill, <laughs> East Texas. You're you're funny with the bills. Opie, <laughs> oh, nope. Oh, excuse me, oh, oh, oh. I need to sneak by you and get this ranch. Oh, oh. oh. I say oh a lot. <laughs> Red eyes. That's from Australia. Sasquatch. Sasquatch. It says here is from Southwest British Columbia. See, we also refer to. Bigfoot as Sasquatch, mm-hmm. but we are close to Canada. Clearly, they are yeah. our neighbors to the north. Um, Shipman or men, West Virginia, you guys cracked me up along with Texas. Skunk ape, skunk demon, skunky bill, stinkaboo. Yo, stinkaboo. <laughs> stinkaboo. Stink man. Oh, man. A tree man. Tommy knocker. <laughs> Must be That's from knocking on trees, I uh-huh. guess. Um, a ween to go. Some of these. A- Wetco, Wendigo, isn't a Wendigo something different? I don't know. Who a hoo hoo? Didn't we already say hoo hoo? But then this spells it out different. But again, who? when I say hoo hoo, I think of something different. Wild man, uncle. Who? It, huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Stop messing with me. Wooly boo booger. Wo- <laughs> Wooly booger. Booger. Boogie. Bo- booger. <laughs> booger. Booger. Right? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God! Woods devil. Woods booger, <laughs> booger, <laughs> woods child. See, that's a good one. Yahoo, Yahoo. That's from Australia. Yellers, why are you yawning? Yellow child. <laughs> that's from Ontario. Do this time. And of course, a yeti. Yeti's on there. I like, See, I like yeti. I like, I like to say yeti. yeti. Are you yeti yet? Are you yeti yet? You want to go yeti in? <laughs> stinky boot hag. Yeah, me yeti stinky boot hag. Yeti. Yeti yet? <laughs> oh, that's from our area, that's for sure. Because we can't Yeti speak yet? correctly, but we... You know, the thing is, people make fun of us. The, <laughs> they do? Uh, yeah. Have you ever seen those memes? Midwesterners? It. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. We like to save time, so we combine our words. Oh, well, yeah. Yant to? You hungry? Uh-huh. You hungry? Yeet yet? Eat nope. yet? Yant to? I just saying. Just saying. <laughs> it's it, yeah, just saying. Yo, oh, oh, let me sneak by you here, and get some ranch. Like that is all stuff we say. It is. We're just trying to get it done. But only in North will you hear or er, in Michigan, Verners. Mm-hmm. Did I tell you this? Or pop? Everywhere yeah. else it's like soda. I I call it soda or soda pop. I get like people like what? What the hell are you I'm talking like, clearly, about? Clearly, you know nothing. <laughs> I call it soda or Coke. There was another one that went with that. Not the ranch, the burners. Oh, nice story about burners. We went to the drive-thru at the Hastings McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Destiny says, I want a root beer. I said, I'll have a number blah, blah, blah with a root beer. Oh, sorry, ma'am. We don't have root beer no more. We replaced it with Verner's. What is wrong with them? I have no... So I pulled up there. I was like, really, Verner's? He said, yeah. And I know that was my first place I ever worked was at that McDonald's location back when I was 16. And they're privately owned, clearly, because no, yeah. you're not going to get Verner's in most anywhere else but Michigan. Maybe Ohio, Indiana, same with uh, uh, Fago. That's a Detroit soda. 
But um, I was like, who just replaces root beer with Verner's? Why wouldn't you just add Verner's? Who takes out root beer For from Verner's. their menu and Nothing then replace it with Verner's? But it's like root beer, and you can like literally put Verner's ice cream in it. Is is an old soda. It's been around for a very, very long time here in Michigan. I understand that, but it also reminds me of my grandparents, and that was the one soda that they would have at their house that they would not hide because they knew that we would not drink it. We did not <laughs> like it as children. Oh, yeah. It's, you ever, like, yeah, drink it, and then, like, you try to breathe, ugh, and yeah. it makes you cough. I don't, mm-hmm. it's the weirdest thing. I don't know if it's just me, but I, I'm not a Verner's drinker. Now, they do say that does something for upset tummies. Yeah, I've heard that. But maybe this is another Michigan thing or Midwestern mm. thing. Whatever we are. <laughs> Wherever we are. Or something. It's soda water, baking soda and water. We take that for upset tummies. Or we'd have Verner's. Mm-hmm. Dad, though, always gave us Coke. He'd go to the store and give us Coke. He said well, one of two things is going to happen. It's either going to make you throw up, which will make you feel better, or it's going to make you burp, which will make you feel better. That's true. And he was, yeah, it, it was true. It always worked. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway. Anyhow. R- rain in the back end. Well, here's a cool story if we're, we're going to talk about, like, like um, UFOs and uh, <laughs> connected with the sightings of Bigfoot. Here on um, Presque Isle, it's um, a peninsula ar- arcing out over Lake Erie. And uh, it's one of the state's most visited summer tourist destinations. One night in July 30th, 31st, in 1966, four tourists from New York found their car stuck in the sand after spending the day relaxing on the beach. One member of the group was sent to call a tow truck, and the police officers came to check on her. And after, um, after being informed that help was on the way, the officers said that they would be back in about an hour. When the police returned about 35 minutes later, the group said that it was witnessed something very weird that was going on up in the sky. It was um, located right above a very wooded area. One of the members went to investigate along with the officers. The two women in the group remained in the car and while they waited for everybody's return. The officers roughly walked roughly about 300 yards up the beach and then before they heard the honking of the car's horn, so they hurried back to see what had happened. The two passengers that were sitting in the car were very shaken and said they had witnessed a doll black shape that was bigger than a man with big head and shoulders, then very, you know, arm-like appendages but no, with no hands and no face that was visible, as though it had turned all, it had its back turned in front of the car before it lumbered into the bushes. They, so they then um, blew the horn and then the scratching sound on the hood of the roof of the car was also reported. In the end, this creature was dis- dismissed by investigators as a raccoon, despite the very distinct description of a bipedal humanoid figure. But what about the uh, UFO that they thought they saw? So they described this as an angular craft emitting red and orange lights before descending down to the beach where it radiated a beam of white light that tracked something into the woods. But eventually it took off at an incredible speed to the north, shortly after the women encountered a humanoid figure. In the early hours of the following morning, officers patrolled the area where the craft allegedly landed. The report says that they noticed the presence of two unusual triangular marks in the area coinciding with the craft's landing zone. The officer writing the report said, I have no reasonable explanation of the UFO and described the, the witnesses as credible. Investigation of the case was eventually abandoned, remaining unsolved to this day. So the Project Blue Book report dismisses the group's testimony as possibly a hoax, though that no conclusion was ever really made. So, you know, a couple of years later, they interviewed a man who said the UFO was a hot air balloon. He reported that he ordered the bill from the issue of a Boy's Life magazine. But this man's claim implies that a homemade hot air balloon would have traveled in a straight line precisely due north for several miles, carried by the wind without staying off course. So that was debunked. Debunkin. Debunkin. Did it. Debunkin. Did it. But that's an interesting story, you know, that basically, you know, back in the 1960s, but you're touring, all of a sudden you're at a beach and you're stuck in the sand and there's weird lights going on over the woods. So you, the officers and the men of the vehicle go check it out and all of a sudden this Bigfoot appears and scares the living shit out of you. I'd go home. Boo. Yeah. I'd go home. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't going big that night. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Screw that shit. Um, Yeah. <laughs> 
crazy. That is and a pretty cool story. These stories really could go on forever. That's yeah. why the numbers, when I looked up the numbers per state, and that's such a small fraction of who has actually had encounters or claim they've had encounters, they're as low as what they are. Mm-hmm. Because you can look up and be reading for days Oh yeah, the stories yeah. that people have put out there. Yeah, there's the tons movies of them. and the shows and finding Bigfoot. You know, I, it is a it's there's a something very to it at least interesting concept. Whether he does ever reveal himself, <laughs> um, to see if if all the accounts are correct, because there is something slightly different every story of what mm-hmm. he looks like. Yeah, but you know, everybody's perception on things is different. Also, with that being said, you know, when cops, okay, let's say there's an investigation on a murder. I'm just, I'm just saying mm-hmm. that because I do like true crime. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, they'll interview somebody, wait, interview them again. Over time, things start changing. Your brain is processing things as to what you've seen. So if you were to ask these people to tell their story two or three times, it is going to change. doesn't necessarily mean that they're lying. It's just how they remember it or how... Yeah, you know, what after, their brain chooses to keep and... Right, because, okay, let's say... Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I just saw Bigfoot. I need to write down what I seen. So you write it down. Well, then you wait a week. Mm-hmm. And you look back and you're like, wait, I also remember this. I also remember this. That triggers something else, yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's all dreams. Anything that happens to us, you know, you put a little time on it, then you start remembering mm-hmm. yeah. the smaller details because you don't give yourself enough time or your enough time for your brain to process everything that you saw. So, like, a lot of these accounts of people saying that they've seen them, they probably actually remember or seen a lot more than what they even say. And that goes for... Anything. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You know, that, that a- anything paranormal at that. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of things we do block out because it's scary or we just... Don't want to see it. Right. We don't take that minute to be like, okay, what just happened because i say that all day what the hell just happened what the hell was that all yeah. day every day <laughs> it certainly wasn't a stinky boo hag not boo hag i have did you hear about that um <clears throat> the fbi they got the fbi involved this one time somebody turned in some hairs to have analyzed uh-huh. and they actually released the fbi report <laughs> so okay listeners the problem is right now i've had some drinks <laughs> and <laughs> I have long weeks at work. Yeah. Yesterday was my Friday, and I'm babying a hangover, and then I usually have a drink when we're recording. Just, just, it's became a thing. Oh, well, really. yeah. Just, where we sit back and we have this girl talk about paranormal stuff, and it's great. It's a great time. So I'm sorry if I don't make sense on some of the things I say. <laughs> just bear with us. Um, but back to the, the FBI thing, you can see that whole case. I'll post, oh, probably the link so you can actually go, but. I was able to print off the copy of or copies of the report from the FBI. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I'll, I'll I will put those on the Facebook page so you guys can see our Bigfoot enthusiast. Also, if you are a Bigfoot enthusiast, Sasquatch, whatever you would like to call him or, or refer to him as, email us, message us. We would love to have an interview with you. We'll yeah. Skype it, you know, cuz a lot of time traveling just sucks. So <laughs> But we will Skype an interview with you. We'd love to hear personal stories. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, even if you're unsure of what it was, you know, it, that's okay. S- mm-hmm. Still be awesome to talk to you. I guess the easiest way is just read. Yeah. Just read. Um, there are notes written on these released um, reports. <laughs> so, the first one. It says, uh, the Bigfoot Information Center and I don't even need to read that. So... It said, gentlemen, the institution conducts research on and into the Bigfoot phenomenon of the Pacific Northwest of the USA. We have been in operation for nearly six years, and we are associated with the Academy of Applied Science of Boston, <laughs> Boston Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> From time to time, we have been informed that hair supposedly of Bigfoot has been sent for examination to the FBI has been examined by the FBI and with the conclusion as a report of the examination that it was not possible to compare the hair that of any known creature of this continent. Oh, that's- so they weren't able to link the two, or that set of hair that somebody to sent else. to anything else. That doesn't necessarily say 
that it was Bigfoot, but there's a creature out there that we haven't... But how would you know it wasn't? Because nobody has any Bigfoot hair. Right. There's nothing to compare it right, to. Right, like, yo, Bigfoot, when you get a haircut so I can steal a little bit of it so we can put it in our system. Not, some, not for, like, witchy stuff, just... No, no, not witchy you know. stuff. But just to have. Yeah. So it's not saying that it is or isn't, but they could not compare it to anything that they have in their system. We'll say that. Oh, will you kindly, will you kindly, to set the record straight once and for all, inform us if the FBI has examined hair, which might be that of Bigfoot. When this took place, it did not take place. What are the result of the an- analysis were? Please understand that our research here is serious. That this is a serious, serious question that needs answering, and that. An examination of hair or the opposite by the FBI does not in any way, as far as we are concerned, suggest that the FBI is associated with our project or confirms in any way that the possibility of the existence of the creature known as Bigfoot. Yours truly, Peter Brine. He Hmm. is the director of BIC, which is the Bigfoot Information Center. So that's what he wrote into the FBI because they got this hair and everything that they have on file, nothing connected to it. So they sent it so there. So they went a step further. Yeah. And that was August 26th of 1976. Oh, well, that's cool. So, yeah, yeah, that was clearly a long time ago. But um, it, it, imagine cool what, what they could have now. Like, if they were to re-research that hair. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just because between now and then, so many things have yeah. been, you know, either debunked or put into the system type of thing. This one was September 10th, 1976. Mr. Peter Bryan, director of the Bigfoot Information Center. Oh, that was from Oregon. Dear Mr. Bryan, references made to your letter dated August 26, 1976. <clears throat> concerning the reported examination of hairs by the FBI laboratory in connection with Bigfoot phenomenon. Since the publication of the Washington Environment Atlas in 1975, which which referred to such examinations, we have received several inquiries similar to yours. However, we have been unable to locate any references to such examinations in our files. So I'm not really for sure what that means, but that's from the laboratory division of the FBI. From J. Crotran Jr., Assistant Director, FBI Laboratory Division. So I'm not really. So I don't ba- know. is that like basically saying they couldn't find any evidence either well, that matched? Last part. Let's. Since the publication of the Washington Environment Atlas in 1975, which referred to such examinations, we have received several inquiries similar to yours. So other people have set in mm-hmm. hairs. However, we have been unable to locate any references to such examinations in our files. So I guess take that as you will. We will, because we need to wrap this up here in a couple minutes. I will post the rest of those. Yeah, definitely. Um, That's pretty cool. It is pretty interesting to look through and read and kind of take it as you will. Because, you know, that's history. (laughs) Yeah. Right there. Uh, But that's a very documented case of let's find out what this is you know just yeah. was it people having a hobby squatching and whatnot it was they were going actually documenting it and trying to find the evidence mm-hmm. the real mm-hmm. evidence of it yeah my conclusion would be since they couldn't find anything at the time that matched at that um at the bigfoot information center I, i'm not saying it is or isn't but there clearly is another mammal out there that we didn't find at the time maybe it's in mm-hmm. there now maybe we found a new species between now and then you know uh, who knows maybe it's a crossbreed of something maybe you know maybe that's what bigfoot is he's a crossbreed of like uh a bear and i don't even know like something a, else like an inbreeder well an inbreeder would be like like weird animals breeding together like mixture. well yeah but, well yeah be a crossbreed <clears throat> like a labradoodle yes some things should just not be mixed you know i had a um a pomeranian which i absolutely loved now, they made those Pomskis, which are amazingly cute, but they have so many health issues, and their mouths are too small, and that Aww. Le- it, that's painful for the dog. People don't understand. They're just like, oh, my God, it's so cute. No, it, it, it's it okay. is cute. It's, it's a good concept. Have it in a picture. Yes, it's that poor puppy. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> we go on all day about dogs. I love dogs. <laughs> So we are going to cut this off here. If you have any more questions or whatever, email us. Um, again, I'll put other information that we couldn't get to on the Facebook page. 
Um, remember, don't yuck someone else's yum. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Check out the Facebook page and group. Also, don't forget your tickets for the live. Get tickets by emailing us at paranormalxl at writeme.com or online through the Facebook page. Um, also, don't forget to check out the Patreon page. The link is in the description or the Facebook page. Just kind of puts you in a different level of what mm-hmm. you could get yeah, by contributing. Um, but regardless, we're still going to put out these episodes. 222 Paranormal Podcast is hosting a Toledo Bigfoot and Paranormal Conference. If you're around that area and you love Bigfoot or anything paranormal, check it out. That is happening October 12th. Check out their Facebook page for more details. I'll say the time, the vendors that are there and whatnot. That should be a really good time. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I think so. They're great. They're great to listen to. So if you ever get bored of us or all caught up, go check out 222 Paranormal Podcast. But they, like I said, check out their Facebook page. They have all the links and whatnot to the the conference that they are hosting so that's really awesome so we appreciate all of you and talk to you next week talk to you later yay Thank you.